It's Tuesday afternoon, 4 p.m. in Central Europe, and it's Space Cafe Web Talk time. Our Space Cafe Web Talk, 33 minutes with Ricardo Conde, will begin soon. Thanks for joining us for our talk today about Portugal's journey into space. As always, we appreciate your participation and ongoing feedback. Spacewatch.global is a Europe-based online platform for information in and about space and new space activities in a geopolitical context. And I would like to thank all our private and corporate supporters that showed their commitment to keeping our independent journalism alive. We really appreciate that. And I know many of you are already familiar with our website, our bi-weekly and daily newsletters and the Space Cafe podcast. The last one featured René Laufer. It was published this morning about science and fiction. Just give it a listen. It's another very awesome conversation. For all of our fans of audio content, we have new episodes also in the Space Cafe radio. We also keep our fan shop open online for you to support us actively and become a space watcher, a real one. If you have missed any of our previous web talks, we have an archive available on our web page in the event section and on YouTube. I met my guest in person in January this year in Brussels, as he was one of the great panelists I had the pleasure to moderate and to listen to him, I recognize that he has really something to say. And I'm pleased to welcome Ricardo Conde now to my Space Cafe today. And let me uh, tell you a bit more about uh, Ricardo. Ricardo is young. <laughs> Let's not talk about age here. He holds a degree in electrical and <laughs> computer engineering from the Technical University in Lisbon and a postgraduate degree in space technology. He began his professional career in 1991, having been linked to the astronautics and space section since 93, with the participation in several national and international programs, in partic particular in space and ground segments. And in 2019, Ricardo joined the Portuguese Space Agency, Portugal Space, as a member of the board. One year later, Ricardo Conde was appointed president of the Portugal Space Agency and is there since then. And now he is here. Welcome again, Ricardo, to our show today. Thank you, Thorsten. And uh, really thank you to having me here. It was really a pleasure to meet you. And we were at the Space Conference uh, and we exchanged some nice uh, uh, thoughts about space. And uh, yeah. I'm here and since uh, we start my start my my career in 93 in fact it was uh, when we launched the first satellite Portuguese satellite it was in 93 so uh, our journey in space didn't start it um, let's say two years ago when we built the space agency is uh, more than that and they're uh, collecting uh, enjoying some moments uh, in our country with some uh, projects, some initiatives, and uh, where we are uh, to see if we can leverage this to another level. I'm quite sure and uh, I'm very happy that you will get give us an, a more inside view in what's going on in Portugal in the next uh, 30 minutes. So first of all, congratulations for the third birthday of the agency. I mean, you mentioned what happened before, but can you give us a short recap? What 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 is the space heritage, the history in space Portugal has? I mean, you had obviously great navigators centuries ago. So, yeah. and where <laughs> are is, we now? <laughs> now, this uh, I'm glad that you started on that because. Uh, we are always connected with our history, and particularly um, the navigators. And if we look particularly on the navigations that we know today, GPS, Galileos, and so on, uh, we were pioneers at that time. But let, let me just uh, go back, as I said, uh, in 90s, the journey of space, uh, uh, in fact, started even before the 90s, but um, I think the, the big milestone, is to, uh, or the first big milestone, it was really in 93, when we launched 
the first Portuguese satellite. It was uh, uh, an Oscar satellite. It was built in the, remember that time, uh, sorry, satellite technologies, a uh, great exporter of uh, this kind of uh, radiometer satellites. So I'm the honor to, to participate in these uh, uh, frame uh, projects in, in the 90s. And in fact, it was, uh, uh, particularly on that time, I started to learn about space and uh, uh, with a vision of from SSTL, of course. Uh, and uh, um, I remember it, it was really impressive that uh, this satellite has a camera with 20 meters of resolution. It's, it's something amazing. And I can tell you that uh, um, I was part of the uh, radio frequency systems. And uh, uh, I remember we embarked in the first Portuguese satellite, the first GPS on board on the uh, SSTL. Uh, um, type of uh, satellites. It was amazing. And then we start to have some um, international level, some programs, but the second, I should say, the second milestones, and uh, I think it was a, um, a giant step, uh, not for the humankind, but for Portugal, it was when we uh, joined ESA. And we joined ESA in 2000. And I remember I was in the industry at that time. And since then, we observed many companies. It was 22 years ago. Uh, so we are in 22. Uh, so many companies uh, arose at that time. Uh, um, many ideas, many crazy ideas, many, uh, let's say, consequent ideas that we have uh, um, now some, uh, uh, some components, some systems, some subsystems because uh, it was a vision for international collaboration. This is my first point. I think when we did this, um, this step, in particular our Minister of Science at that time, uh, he wants to, let's do it together in Europe because uh, we need to learn. We, need to, we are in a curve to learn. And 20 years later, we have, uh, um, a uh, vibrant ecosystem. I, I have here in front in my desk the catalog that we uh, we, um, we, uh, we 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 built. We produced this uh, last year, and when we are looking what we have, this is our ecosystem. We have more than sixty entities working in space wow. in several dom domains. We have. Uh, uh, space segment, uh, launchers, uh, downstream, uh, ground segment. Uh, and we have some niches, uh, some companies with some niche, very uh, motivated. And uh, uh, we are participating in many missions on the European Space Agency. And this is, again, uh, one of our giant steps. So this is my message. We need to do it in a collaborative way. Mm, uh, we you, cannot do it alone. As you talk about Europe, as one element of the collaboration. I think it's not just exclusive to Europe, obviously not. So what is Portugal's space ambitions? What are the main projects that you are driving at the moment? Yeah. Because you don't, you don't have an infinite budget. I assume you don't have it. We need to make choice. And, and uh, uh, look, uh, um, I was in the, um, last week in the space symposium. I participated in a panel for let's say emergent, I don't like the name, but it was the, the, the name emergent space agencies. Uh, indeed, we are three years. And uh, uh, they asked me exactly the same, the same thing. And uh, I was, uh, uh, I said that, uh, look, if you ask me if I want to go to the moon and also to the Mars, I will say, of course, yes, but if I will take a ride, but uh, I uh, don't think that uh, we are prepared for that. We can dream and we can, and we will, and we are participating in uh, uh, these ambitions together with our, in a partnership. But if we are looking for Portugal, particularly because we have resources, uh, limited resources, we need to look so, for some areas. And 20, more than 20 years developing our capabilities, it is time to jump to uh, to give the, the next step. And the next step is how we can have national program. And the national program must address the needs 
what, uh, what the problem that we have that we can be solved, but the least can be or uh, space can help to solve. This is where we need to be focused. So we need to focus in the users. Look, and we have a motto when we launch in the web summit, uh, uh, a challenge, what we call it is a research award, an half a million uh, research awards for a sustainable space and sustainable health. Uh, what does it mean to try to, uh, to if we have a, a huge amount of uh, satellite uh, earth observation based satellite uh, data or uh, and artificial intelligence and supercomputing, can we tackle some problems on Earth? For, particularly if, look, can we uh, manage to track uh, maritime litter, plastics, for example? It's so simple to say, right? It's so difficult to implement. And we observe that. We have so many. Uh, international teams that apply. And I can tell you that uh, it's really a challenge. T -t Tracking plastics is a problem that we have, a real problem. So we have so many problems to solve. Another one, you see that we are an Atlantic nation. If uh, together with our land and the, our uh, ocean, if we, um, it's Atlantic, huge Atlantic that we have in front of us. If you, we combine together, <laughs> we are, one of the most uh, largest country in Europe. And of course, we need to monitor this area. We need to look, if, if you look to Portugal in the, in the European perspective, we are peripheric, right? But if you look in the Atlantic perspective, we are central. Portugal is one of the countries like uh, France and, and Spain and England. We are central in Europe, in, in Atlantic. That means Atlantic is one of our raw materials that we need to take care of. And space in this huge dimension gives an answer to monitor and also to monitor the resource so, so that we have in, uh, in Atlantic, but also in terms of security and safety. But if you look to the land, look, we uh, like uh, so many other uh, countries in Europe, look, uh, France, um, sorry, uh, Spain, uh, Greece, um, Italy, um, Cyprus, Portugal, we have tremendous problems with the climate change that we are feeling that the things are, are changing. Look to the fires. This is, uh, I was in California uh, one month ago to, to uh, in uh, interactions with a California, a California coal fire, which is called, called coal fire, is an institution that uh, deal with the fires. We have the same problems with California. Is used fires. So, what if we build our national programs to give an answer from space to tackle problems like fire prevention? And this is something that I learned. We don't fight uh, the fires. Uh, we prevent the fires. It's something that we can use also satellites to do it. So, we need to point these to our ambitions of a national programs use satellites. That's the reason. The next steps, this uh, evolution for building our capacity, what we are doing now is building our national program. So we launch what we call it uh, the programmatic challenges. One of two, look to the downstream applications and how can you use satellite data with a common data policy to use it to tackle real problems. So we are focused in the sustainability and we are focused on the hurt in our problems. And for that, and this is the, the beauty part of this, we launch into 2020 an idea to why not to have our own satellite constellation in a partnership with, for example, with Spain. We did that and we built, we'll start to build this year. So we launched 16 satellites in the high resolution and very high resolution, 50 centimeters in a multi-spectral, exactly to tackle the problems that we have in common with Spain. So our prime minister, together with the, the, um, the president of the Spanish government, signed this agreement. Space is a common understanding. And we are using the recover plan also to try to leverage our ecosystem to another level. So to put Portugal in a supply, in a complete supply chain, not only the component, not only the system, 
but in a programmatic level. And this means that we will develop an industrial agenda uh, for space to integrate satellites, to operate satellites, and to tackle the problems, as I said, the, the, that we have in Portugal. Can, and there are many can you elaborate on that a bit? Hmm. Can, can you elaborate on that? Uh, Mark asked the question, so what do you do on the national side and what in the ESA framework or other organizations? This is a, a very good question. And uh, as I said, uh, I start here uh, exposing my thoughts that saying that uh, we should do it always in international cooperation. Our common, let's say, our, our, our roots are, are ESA. If you ask me what is my uh, uh, agency, uh, first is, uh, is our European uh, agency, uh, is uh, uh, all the skills that we have in, in, in Europe, uh, we have it because we have visa. And then we have a national programs and the national agencies they are, in our case, uh, particularly in our case, but I, I, I am in, uh, in the Council of ESA and I, I know that my counterparts, uh, I think this, the same way, uh, we need to reinforce ESA. That means, in my perspective, and what we are doing is, particularly these national programs, we are doing and we want to do it with ESA. So, uh, uh, even to manage uh, um, uh, the, um, uh, the national uh, uh, projects, but also to give us to uh, expertise, uh, to, uh, uh, to, um, to be sure that we will be well succeeded. We have almost four or five years to complete this constellation. And uh, he's, uh, gave, he will give us grants that this will be done in a good time. And in a, in a, as I said, in, in, in a interoperability with, uh, with Spain. And uh, Spain will do it also with HISA. Italy, in the recovery plan, is doing it with, uh, with HISA. Uh, Greece, in the, their telecommunications uh, satellites, they are doing this with HISA. And uh, if the question is, uh, he, we want to do it with HISA, always. We want always to do it in HISA. Uh, let me tell you something, to, uh, Tosin, which is important. When we created, uh, um, the Portuguese government created uh, the agency in the perspective of ESA hub. That means this makes sense. More and more, this makes sense. And uh, uh, I am one of the persons that uh, thinks that we need to empower ESA in several domains in Europe. And more and more space is uh, uh, serves our lives, uh, but you know that uh, the world was changed in February, right? Uh, and particularly the safety and security in Europe. I believe more and more space um, uh, is an answer also for our security. And we need to be prepared for that. There are no taboos in our discussions. So uh, we need to give an answer in our union uh, particularly from space, at addressing sustainable problems, interactions of the climate change, uh, oceans, uh, uh, all the problems that are already mentioned that we have, particularly that we have, but also uh, geopolitics and uh, space is uh, something that gives for sure an answer. But we have another, another other dimension, of course, and this is uh, the education. We don't have, look, uh, we have a small country, we are a small country, and uh, 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 we need critical mass to work in these areas, right? And uh, uh, we have a very skilled persons in the ranking uh, uh, in Europe, engineering and STEMs. But the thing is, if we don't fix them here, uh, uh, glue with them to our activities, uh, where we live. So uh, we need to uh, look to the education and what we call space literacy yeah. as an answer to involve more and more. And we have several, I will mention some of the projects that we have in the, in the education, which is something that I'm really so proud and my colleagues, they are, they, they are really motivated to implement this. For example, I, when, when I was in the, in the US, I met 
these guys of the um, American Space Sport Cup, or, uh, American Cup Space Sport, or I don't know what is the name. I, I have some flyers here. Well, this is a competition they are organizing worldwide, launching rocket at university level. And they were really surprised when we told them, look, we have EUROC, European Rocketry Challenge. This is the first in the competition in Europe that joined all the European uh, uh, League of uh, uh, Universities. They are competing in Portugal, 10 kilometers high. It is unbelievable. This year, we will open the third edition of the European Rocketry Challenge. We received here so many uh, uh, university teams from universities with a maturity, pre-industrial maturity. I, I was standing when I, when I saw this, uh, my colleagues, they are really into, uh, in a uh, very interesting matter, it, it is related with, it, with this, uh, with this uh, um, competition. Another thing is, for example... Wait a second, uh, Dwayne asked uh, on, on that uh, European uh, rocket challenge, uh, what is your support as an agency to that challenge? Are you awarding something or just giving it an, a, a room for it? Other room, <laughs> a bigger room, I should say. No, we are first. We are. This is a, a an agency, Portuguese Space Agency competition. So we organize. This is a brand for this competition. Is a national level. So we receive all the, the participants here, and we have uh, rules, uh, of course, and we have. Uh, they are competition in three. Uh, segments uh, uh, depends of the height that we want to go three kilometers six kilometers nine kilometers but the answer there are several uh, technologies uh, uh, solid hybrid liquid propulsion they compete in several categories and then what we have we have several awards in terms of innovation in terms of uh, this this year we will uh, have a payload also in the in the rockets uh, an experiment this is something really unbelievable. And what we have, we have, uh, this is a, an event that uh, happens in October, uh, 11, this, this year is between 11 and 17 or 18. Uh, and it is a side event of air show. And we have a very big campus with a close cooperation with our army and our national defense, which is amazing. I can tell you, they, were, they are really supportive on this uh, uh, challenge. And uh, we have a big campus with a ramp. Can, can I share a video? I have a video here. Ah, uh, I no? um, Okay. Then we, we can start to send it over to us. We put it in the in the thank you minute in the, in the recap. So promise. Okay, I will, I will do it. I will do it. Yeah. I will do it, Torsten. So this is a really a unique competition that uh, it starts to be uh, uh, what we want is to transform this competition in a mecca okay. uh, of the rockets. But we have another look in, in September, we are uh, doing what we call astronaut for one day for schools. What does it mean? We launched a campaign that uh, we launched in, on the 18th this month. Who wants to be an astronaut for one day? And what does it mean? Uh, we have a program. We contract the um, uh, um, a flight, the parabolic flights. Uh, to uh, simulate, to simulate, no, to, to real fly in microgravity, okay? And then what we did, what we are doing, we launch all the schools, in all the schools in, in Portugal, uh, between, the, 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 um, between 11 and 14 years old, uh, you, if you want to fly in microgravity, you apply if you, are, if you want to be an astronaut. And we have three selections phase, and we will uh, uh, go to the same path like you are selecting by, by an astronaut. We are involved with uh, medical uh, appointments. We are, we are uh, evaluations also. Um, we, are, we are also involved the Portuguese Air Force with, uh, with uh, the simulators, with uh, um, the um, uh, gravity uh, simulators. We, we are in, implement a campaign to select 30 students they will fly on September. So uh, this is something that to, to attract to the students to the um, to the um, uh, to this area. And we are also involved with uh, what we call uh, a CNCV here, which is a, 
uh, um, outreach and uh, this uh, science literacy to promote also the CANSAT competition at the national level in the schools. So we have PhD calls, uh, summer scholarships. Uh, so we are looking really uh, bad in, the, in our uh, uh, students uh, to motivate them to, uh, to, the, to be part of the future professionals. But there are there other programs also on the on the space uh, space education side, as you mentioned before. Just mm -hmm. also the, the the active ones. I mean, you have the or you, Portugal is the host for the ISU uh, yes, SSP exactly. this year and space for business. You you uh, when so I'm correctly informed, you signed an MOU with the IASL in uh, in Colorado yes, last exactly. last week. So I mean that goes all in this direction of of excite. The next generation. Yeah, Torsten, uh, let me start with the study, uh, space studies program. This is a, a partnership, of course, with the Technical University of Lisbon here. We are sponsoring everything to put uh, high quality uh, uh, course this year. Uh, but together with this course, we are uh, attracting some key persons and some also some events that will color it, the, the, the events. It is a great achievement. We are really uh, uh, think that will be um, a success. Uh, I received so many uh, uh, feedbacks uh, in, in the space symposium. Uh, even the community is well motivated. Uh, this will be for sure a, a, a success. And I can tell you also two other things which is important. Uh, last year, um, you know, we have two universities, there are these courses of uh, aerospace engineering courses. And this, the last year, another one opened uh, as um, space courses also you know, at the university level. And this year, more too will open. So, uh, um, this uh, step by step uh, environment that we are creating around the dedication, around the perspectives of the national programs, and around the capacity building, continue to build our ca capability in space, I think we start to get some results. And we have three years. So if you ask me what we're going to be, uh, or what we're going to do in the last uh, um, years to this decade, we want to. Make Portugal a space nation. But again, uh, if we want the right to go to the moon, we go to Austin. And thank you for that. But we are not looking, particularly, it's not one uh, of our ambitions. As I said, we have so many problems to solve here. And let, let us solve our problems here. Then let's see if we can mind ring to the moon or something. I would like to go in the remaining time through a, a number of questions we, we got from our really engaged audience. And thank you very much for, 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 for those. I uh, apologize if I don't uh, spell or say your name correctly. Um, one from Henry or Henri uh, Bourré. Um, it's about the... Um, do you notice any change in the direction priorities of Portugal space policy with the new Minister of Science, Technology and Higher Education, Elvira <laughs> Fortunato? Does the new minister um, impact the planning towards the ESA ministerial in November? Who is it? Is that Alain Bory? Yes. <laughs> I know you very well. Yeah, <laughs> okay, thank good. you, Alain. I, uh, thank you, Alain. No, um, no, look, there are change of ministers. Uh, but I think the um, um, agency is consolidated. We have several, let's say, uh, programs let, uh, 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 in, the, um, in the next years to, to implement the next years. And we have a very, uh, let's say, uh, um, well-defined uh, path. Uh, and uh, as I said, we start to have some results. And uh, of course, there will be change, some changes because uh, uh, you know that uh, we are the person very, um, uh, let's say, uh, motivated and put space in the in the center of the things, and particularly put in the users in 
Facebook people. I, I, I will remember forever this because this is the name that he, is, he wants to push space for people. I remember that. And it was one of the mottos he used in the compact uh, um, uh, meetings or council. Uh, but uh, the new minister is, is also in, will be also engaged for sure because everyone will, uh, are engaged. I, I'm feeling this. I already had the opportunity to have uh, several meetings uh, um, with a new minister. Uh, she's in, in the year uh, two weeks ago, uh, more or less. So I already have uh, some uh, first um, exchange with her. Uh, I will today, I will fly to Paris because I will have a council tomorrow in, in Giza. And uh, there are some small things that we are approaching to take some decisions. And one is the ministerial next uh, this November, right? And of course, we are in the moment together with our ecosystem to push for the ambitions of companies, the ambitions for the programs, and to reflect this in the ministerial. Our main uh, is not the only one, but our main tool for the ministerial for the the, the space program in Portugal is the, the ministerial, uh, because we are, let's say, contributing to the uh, uh, um, uh, something bigger than us, uh, and then we'll return for our capacity building. But then we have other uh, frame programs, in particular, the recover program. The program is was one of the main programs that will make a difference in Italy, in Spain, in Portugal, in Greece, particularly in, this, in these countries, they put uh, space in the recovery plan. And this is an opportunity. And you know, you, 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 we don't need to, or do you want, we, we don't want to um, neglect this opportunity. Um, another question, and I put two questions together here from uh, Chris and uh, Professor Sousa, de Sousa, um, because they're going on the same line. and. <laughs> It's about, or isn't Portugal ideally situated due to uh, leverage corporations between Europe and Brazil? And uh, Professor de Sousa goes even to the African countries, uh, knowing the diplomatic added value with the Portugal speaking or Portuguese speaking countries. Uh, space. And nowadays is a uh, diplomacy tool, right? And uh, I, I remember uh, last, for example, last week uh, when I was in the space team. I had a particular launch with uh, my colleague, my Brazilian colleague, and uh, all the um, Brazilian space agency. And I can tell that we already start some kind of friend collaborations. This is something, and particularly in the education, but only uh, also in uh, another uh, um, domains in the earth observation. We are, uh, I will fly to Egypt uh, next week. Uh, I will go to meet the Egyptian space agency and also the perspectives for uh, uh, these constructions of the Africa Space Agency, right? But we have very good relations with Angola. We are also to try to implement some educational programs with Angola and also South Africa and uh, uh, Algeria. So, uh, Algeria. Uh, so uh, of course, is our uh, um, common understanding the language, but uh, I think there is more the language, is the needs. And uh, more and more, the young generations are quite format for, for space. And I see this, where I saw the, this, when we organized last year, the European uh, Europe Africa Conference, uh, when we uh, had the, the, um, the presence of the, um, the Council of the EU. Mm -hmm. And I saw um, they are really motivated and they are frame of collaboration. We are doing, we, we are doing that. Wonderful. And shoot out to our host of the Space Cafe Brazil, Ian, who is in, on the on the on zoom today and thank you ian for for doing this great job in brazil on behalf of our space watch so let me get a uh, last question because we are almost uh, running out of time and you have to catch a flight uh, as well so um you mentioned you mentioned portugal building our uh, and it's from bruno no surname a constellation of satellites with spain so my question is where is infanata Inf infinite Inf infinite wasn't it supposed to be a first Portuguese commercial satellite? I will not enter in this uh, conversation for uh, okay. I know the reasons they are behind. Uh, this is a, a, a Portuguese initiative so that belongs to Infant. We, you, you mean Infant? It's a Portuguese uh, initiative with uh, several uh, consortia, with several um, uh, companies. But I'm, I, I will address one thing which is important. Infant was, was 
and it still is, one of the main source of knowledge to develop and integrate capabilities in Portugal. And for sure, this knowledge and these capabilities will be used in this new frame uh, of companies they are preparing to launch the Atlantic Constellation. So if you, if Bruno is asking about if it is the first, the first, I, I already addressed that. The first, it was the Portuguese satellite in 93, the PioSat one. Commercial, it was commercial. Yeah, commercial, satellite. but uh, it, it is necessary to launch to be commercial, right? It was not wow. launched. And what we want to do is, and but this is the lead of the commercial leads, okay? As a space agency, we promote and we try to uh, help uh, to build the, the, all the ca uh, capacity, Portuguese uh, capabilities in our companies to uh, solve problems. And particularly in Atlantic Constellation, uh, 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 let's say the, the, the pillars for sure will come to the development of the, uh, these infant projects. Okay, great. Thank you very much for your time. I'm afraid we have to come to an end now, or uh, even so, I really enjoyed this conversation and it could go on and we have dozens of questions are in the are in the q and a but hey that's an invitation for next one so uh, i mean we are here we are here to stay and are saying so you are and uh, maybe there's a chance to to come to to lisbon to one of the programs so space for business or the isu ssp we will see. So before we finish today, don't forget the audience. It's Yuri's night. Let's celebrate the first human in space 61 years ago. And yes, we still call it Yuri's night. Uh, and um, I know my guest will is heading to an exciting meeting tomorrow, so he's out. But hey, what are you guys doing? Put it in the chat what you guys are doing tonight uh, to celebrate our Yuri's night. So. Um, we are going to a short Easter break, what means we don't have additional programs this, this week. But next week on Tuesday, we are back and um, I'm back with Chris Kunstetter of AXA Space. And he is an insur space insurer. And I think that's a very important species we all need for our activities in space. So let's see what our, um, how he's dealing with the new challenging our situation. Then on the 26th, uh, I'm have the great pleasure to talk to the uh, Director General of, of USPA, uh, Rodrigo da Costa, um, about their work, of their important work. And that will be a very busy week. So on the 28th, the next Space Cafe Scotland by the wonderful Angela Mattis will talk with Frank Strang from Saxoford Spaceport. Yeah, more spaceports in the in the house. Mm -hmm. On the 29th, we do a Space Cafe Canada by Dr. Jessica West with maritime launch services from Canada. So more on that. On the 2nd of May, our next Space Cafe Austria by Judas Delaney will happen with Tomasz Roszynski from the European Space Policy Institute. And on the 3rd of May, I will have my 33 minutes with Dr. Jana Robinson of the uh, PSSI in Prague or in Washington, wherever she is at that point of time. All events are going to be online on Eventbrite. And as always, we would like to hear your feedback. So please check in with us on Twitter, Facebook or LinkedIn. Don't forget to sign up to our daily or bi-weekly newsletters. And if you like to treat yourself with something special, become a real space watcher today and help us or help us in our supporter program we need your support to maintain our independent journalism for you. And thank you again, multi obrigado, I think it's in Portuguese, uh, Ricardo, for the inspiring talk and being my guest today. And thanks again to this entire team for doing their great job week by week again. I hope you all will stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you next week. In the meantime, happy Easter. All thank the best. You. Visit our website, follow us on social media, and don't forget, become a space watcher. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. All the best. Bye bye. Bye bye.